Hi, I'm Matt Shostak with Cornstone Restoration. We're here on a customer's roof uh, doing a roof inspection. Um, we're out here in Jacksonville, right off of Trout River across the road here. Um, a lot of waterways, a lot of marshes and swamps in this area, so we're going to have a lot of high humidity, a lot of weather anomalies driven by those areas. We have a back waterway inlet right here, probably full of delicious blue crabs. Um, that could also cause some weather anomalies, kind of consistent with what we're seeing. We're basically surrounded by weather anomaly causing geological features. So we're going to see weather impact from multiple angles here. Um, I mostly expect from this direction because it's a large, the largest body of water. Um, all right, so we came up on that end. There's our ladder right there. Initially, we do our, our cursory look. Homeowner expressed uh, concern that there was granular loss. Um, so somebody came by with a selfie stick and inspected the roof from the selfie stick and said that there was too much granular loss, so their insurance gave them a letter saying that they should have it looked at by a professional. So that's why we're here today. Um, first thing we do, we look at the roof and, and kind of inspect the condition of it for repairability and age. Um, I do see tar substrate underneath. We do have some granular loss. It's probably about 30%. Certain areas of the roof obviously see a little bit more wear than the others, which kind of leads us in the direction of we kind of know where the prevailing winds are coming from. Um, when I walk on it, it definitely does sound crispy. Do a sound test here. A newer pliable shingle is going to be sound deadening. So these have seen some heat. Looking at our ventilation here, we have a lot of ridge, probably enough ridge to do actual ridge ventilation, which gives much more even cooling. But for some reason they went with these three six foot off ridge vents here. Um, not a big deal, not a big deal. However, a uh, ridge vent would be a much better way to do it. We could cool this area of the roof as well as this area. Um, so when we, if and when we replace this roof, we'll do that ventilation calculation and get that corrected. Um, that being said, so these shingles are being baked moderately in more some areas more than others. Um, I do think that these shingles are old and brittle. Some of the ones that are loose, we can kind of see how flat like a cookie they want to stay. This one that's lifting, um, it's like a board. Okay, it means that it's brittle. A newer shingle will kind of roll like a soft taco. Um, like I said, prevailing winds from this direction, most likely. So let's start over there. We have a hail date in July and June of 2023. So prevailing winds from this direction, the water, hail marks start appearing before my eyes. We got a good group here. That one's questionable. It could be, but it's associated within, you know, one dollar of this one that is obvious. This one's obvious. We don't have any blistering due to heat. These weren't like extremely overheated and, and boiled. Um, so it does give us a nice reveal when there is hail. That one right there. This one's a little hard to see. It hit high, didn't knock a lot of granules off when in a corner hit. This one, beautiful reveal, that's definitely hail. So we have this pattern here, more than 10 within a 10 foot square that gets this slope bought. Um, being that these are brittle and we have damage so low on the structure, uh, basically the damage is gonna spread and I'll talk about that a little later. An issue I did find over here, we have numerous renditions of satellite television. Someone ripped an old mount out or a storm took it off and they didn't caulk that back up. This low on the roof, it's not a huge detrimental thing that's just dumping into the soffit, but that can cause some issues. We probably are gonna see some rot in that area. This is the area that I expect to see a lot of wind pulling things, uh, pulling shingles up here. So these lines are lifting shingles. 
So this one goes full length. This one, I only the corner came up to about here, so I only marked that. But we have this nail that's being pulled out by this one that's lifting. Here on the corner is the first spot they usually either rip out or, or lift the nail up. So this nail has, this shingle has pried this nail up and now this one is flapping back and forth and abrading and causing that to happen. Saw this in multiple places on this roof. H for hail. Oh, yeah. Hailboy hat. Stuck in the trees here. Beautiful reveal on these hail marks up here. Five hits. Some of those might be too small to um, mark the roof, but we always check soft metals. It shows associated damage. Um, I always want to look above this kind of thing and see is there a tree maybe that's dropping nuts um, that could cause that kind of a thing. This is not a nut producing tree. That hill over there has nothing really above it. The tree is uh, quite a standoff distance away. It's a young tree and it doesn't um, appear to bear fruit of any sort. Here, we, um, let me show you how I found this area. One of my tactics um, for doing damage sweeps is I come to the edge of the roof and I peer down the lines. And they should all be nice and straight, nothing weird, cattywampus, wavy, nothing shifted out of place. So we're looking down here and we have some weird divot. There's something inconsistent. Weird color, it's darker in this area. Why? So I wanna go over to that area, start inspecting the shingles and we have this. It may be from uh, turbulence caused due to the dip or whatever the case may be. This area is being affected all of these are lifting as a group, as a sheet. Um, these are nails that have pulled through on the corner. I can feel the hole where there's no nail in the shingle anymore. I don't know if you can see that. Same thing with this one. It's pretty dark, you probably can't see it. Uh, doop -doo -doop. So those eventually are gonna start coming up worse as a group. Um, soft metals. Obvious, probably should have marked that one too. Obvious, dense. Take a piece of chalk, scrape it across here. We have obvious dents. Midway on the roof, there's some. We have some corner hits here on the, on the bead. Um, and again, you can't see it here, so Sometimes they're not big enough to cause any issues with the shingles or it's unseen, it's not obvious, but clearly at some point in time, this entire roof has been hit with hail. Um, burden of proof is on the insurance to, to prove the storm date, to disprove the storm date. Uh, and we do have a storm date in coverage period that has 0.75 inch hail um, on site within one mile and within three miles and there was also a one inch or two in there this is an area where we have marring we got a bunch of these shingles with edges that are kind of worn off could be that something landed here and scraped i saw this a lot in the hurricane affected area um, i immediately look down follow gravity is there anything down here i don't see anything now this may have been from a covered storm. I'm not sure if the homeowner ever had to pick up pieces of wood that miraculously appeared um, or a branch. And we seem to have a burn barrel with some sticks in it. I, I can't determine that, but I can determine that is a mar from something at some point in time. <clears throat> we have not inspected the garage yet interesting fact florida is a matching state and i can tell by looking by the way that it is so i look at this roof and i look at the garage roof that those are matching colors so if this roof is damaged to the point that it needs to be fully replaced then that also has to go with it because you'll be devaluing 
the property by having two separate colors. The homeowner, whoever did this, wanted that consistent color across the property um, because it looks clean and neat and orderly and that keeps the property value high. So to do one and not the other is a wish wash kind of scenario and it, it decreases the value. So we're talking about spreading damage. We have brittleness, absolutely for sure. There's age on here. Um, these probably are not repairable because I, I explained to the homeowner and, then, and you guys um, on the tube multiple times that it's gonna cause damage to the next shingle up. Okay, so here we have a shingle. It's, we can see dark lines across it. Pretty obvious, not consistent with the ones nearby. So this one in particular has been catching some slack. So we go ahead and looks normal. Well, when we lift on it, we can see bulging right here on the dark spot is where the shingles kind of right there we go we can see the bulges right there this periodic back and forth flexing uh, from wind it's full lifting shingle flexing in the wind is going to bend those glass fibers back and forth and snap them eventually that'll come off so let's say this one is damaged and the insurance says, yep, that, that needs to be replaced. So the ones above it are gonna get damaged by nature of replacement. So I gotta follow the install lineup to see how far this is gonna spread. So it's gonna go up on this angle, all the way to there. And the damage on this side is gonna spread all the way to there. And then I gotta overlap it because my over underlayment has to overlap the slope. So the ones over there are gonna be affected. So that's gonna wash all the way up there all the way to there and that's greater than 25 percent of this one slope that'll have to be fixed in one year because of this one shingle greater than 25 percent front slope combined with the hail we're absolutely above 25 percent that hail damage down there being um, bought by insurance will cause me to wash up this valley which will cause me to wash up this entire slope and over onto the other one same thing here because of this uh, hip, I have to wash over to this one. Definitely this area greater than 25% combined with this. We're at 50% uh, for this whole slope here. Um, these will have to be replaced because they are damaged from instant accidental storm damage. So that will cause an area around them to be removed. High wind damage down there with nail poles. Nail pole down there low in the slope same thing um, I think the insurance company ab absolutely should be um, should buy this one for sure along with these uh, lifting shingles here we have associated lifting shingles the area of high wind relatively unprotected area the ocean is that way trout river is this way weather anomalies high wind area so we have Again, full lifting shingle here. The next one above it, on the corner, starts pulling out a nail. Next one above it wears through on that nail. Within 2.5 feet, we have the exact same thing happening here. This one isn't on a corner, but this shingle is a full lifting and creasing. Increase developing shingle um, yeah so my synopsis is we should definitely we have real storm damage up here obviously hail dense lifting shingles that are creased nails being pulled through other shingles I do recommend we make an insurance claim there is instant accidental damage here caused by a storm um, there is a storm date reflecting with wind goes with hail so hail date also creates wind um, yeah I think uh, absolutely necessary that we make a, a, a storm claim on this one again I have not done the garage yet I don't plan on doing the garage in this video but we're gonna take a look at it anyways even though matching state okay that concludes this video have a fantastic day